Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to walk through how you can indeed install the Anaconda package. Uh, this is the package that I'd like to encourage you to install. The reason being uh, that if you are coming from a non-programming uh, background or computer science background, this is uh, probably the easiest way to get started. Uh, although this is not an endorsement of Anaconda, it's just more uh, for our own convenience sake and also for the ease of use. Uh, you only need to point your browser to anaconda.com anaconda .com, and um, come to this once your website loaded select downloads and then from there you can choose either your windows version your mac os version or linux either of uh, the version that's relevant to you and once you've done that just click download and install. Uh, I will highly encourage you to make use of Python 3.6 uh, Python 3.6 um, because the 2.7 is uh, on its way out. Alright, so once you actually have it installed, what next? Uh, the key thing about this is that um, a lot of you have, uh, from experience, multiple versions of uh, Python installed. You might have Python 2.8 our X version and also another version of Python 3.x version installed. So let me close this off. This is how I start my um, Python or Anaconda. So I will come to my terminal. Uh, if you have it here, then use it. If not, then uh, under the launch pad, just terminal. And I will type anaconda.navigator. Okay, Anaconda dash navigator. Now some of you might have it under your launch pad as one of the icons. I don't. So I'm just going to type this manually uh, to the terminal. It's anaconda dash navigator. Just press return and after that you should see the green snake showing up. This is a green snake by the way. Um, so wait for that to load up. Right. <coughs> Once it's uh, finished loading, this is what it should look like. Right, you have a few icons available to you, uh, a few suites uh, for you to run with. Now, there is also these environments, which I will come back to in a minute, but uh, let's start with home. Now, from here, you can actually start uh, your Python journey already. The typical suites that people make use of is either Notebook, IPython, or Spider, whichever one that's uh, suitable or that you are comfortable with. For the instructions uh, purpose, I will make use of notebook uh, predominantly. All right, let me just quickly show you uh, what Spider look like. Uh, this is for your serious programmer who are looking to uh, develop using script based rather than using notebook. Uh, this is the environment that you will make use of. Um, so this is what it looks like. You have your scripts here. After you finish typing it, you can save it. And when you can actually run your script and see the output here. This is the file explorer for you to explore, much like Windows Explorer. And this is the variable explorer. So if I just do 2 plus 2 and press return, I get a 4. Um, now, my apologies to those who are not familiar with Python. Um, this is a short course on Oenda. Um, I won't be going through the basics of Python. That's an assumed knowledge. Um, if you are not familiar with Python, I highly encourage you to uh, brush up uh, or learn that skill before you come over here because uh, I really have, I, I'm not able to incorporate that whole part because that really is a standalone course on its own. There are plenty of useful resources out there to learn Python. I do have a course, two courses in fact on Python. If you refer to the bonus lecture, uh, there are some uh, links to uh, utilize my course. If you not, uh, if you want to use others, that's fine as well. The main thing is that you do need to make use of Python for this purpose. Right, so let's just say if I use store the value to 4, you will notice that the value is actually highlighted here. If I type again, another A is equal to a 4 point. And then you will notice that it will tell you the type and also the value stored in there. All right, with that, I'm going to just close this uh, spider. 
that spider you can just launch immediately if you like uh, from that environment. Uh, you can use IPython if you are if you just want to do a quick check. Uh, it's a very lightweight, so it runs very very quickly. All right, as I mentioned before, we're going to predominantly run most of our computation and also illustration from Jupyter Notebook, which is the popular uh, uh, environment for uh, a lot of um, data scientists as well as scientific uh, and as popular in the scientific community. The next thing that I do want to cover is regarding environments. Right, it's a good practice to create a new environment uh, and segregate all the different environments that you have. The reason being Python is an active, uh, actively developing uh, open source. Uh, Python is, uh, there's new versions of Python being rolled out over every couple of months. The packages, the libraries also get rolled out regularly as well. So in order, and every time when some of these new packages get rolled out, the old one may break. So it's a good practice to create an environment whereby you have all the dependencies, uh, the relevant packages all installed and segregate from other development that you may have. Uh, one is you maintain the same development, that's one. Two is that you don't want your, if you have multiple projects running, you don't want the dependency of one packages affecting the other because in one environment I might be running Python 3.5, another I might be running Python 3.6, and another I'm experimenting with the new Python 3.7. And it will not be impossible to actually run it all from one environment, so you do have to create a brand new environment for that purpose. So in our situation, let's click create. You can notice that you can actually choose different environment here. Uh, with this, I'm going to just type Oanda. B20, you don't have to follow me, you can call it whatever you like. In this case, I'm just happening to be calling it on the underscore version 20 uh, because it makes sense to me and it is also easy to remember. So it's a meaningful name, obviously, uh, one that I can go back to uh, and refer to it quickly. Right, as this is being created, you notice that it's creating the environment and also fetching some of the relevant software. Uh, there are other environments that I have, uh, some of them are for deep learning, some of them are for machine learning, some of them are for interactive brokers. Right, we'll just wait for that to run and I'll speed up this version so that you don't have to watch. Alright, now that the installation is done, uh, it tells you that these are the so-called packages that has been installed. If you look carefully, not, it's a very short list. Okay, so those are what's in store. Now, we're going to make use of <clears throat> some software that doesn't come with it. Um, so this is how you install, this is one of the ways that you actually install dependencies. So I type Anaconda here under not install. If I want to install this, I click Anaconda and I apply. Any point in time when you receive a uh, not valid or error or anything like that or package not found then that means the, the package has not been installed yet so you will need to come back to your anaconda navigator to install that package so it will fetch and it will tell you that there's 228 packages that will be installed uh, it's quite a long list so as i browse through them these are what i need um, and uh, the key one that I want to look for is whether, uh, okay, Jinja, Jupiter, okay, these are all the key ones that I want, so I just click apply. Again, I'll speed up this uh, screen so that you don't have to watch through. Welcome back. Um, as you can see, the installation is now complete. Um, the next step now is to illustrate to you how do you actually get started with the Jupyter Notebook that I mentioned before. Um, this is the Jupyter Notebook. In order for you to actually start your apps within the specific environment that you created, you need to choose from all the multiple channels that you have the relevant um, uh, environment. So here we are choosing Oanda underscore version 20. You click launch. And 
voila, that's done. All right, so from there you can go to any locations that you like. Uh, in my case, I'm going to the desktop. I do have a folder called Oenda underscore V20 and all my notebooks are in here. And I just do choose one to run just to check that everything is fine. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's up and running uh, and all good. So with that, I'm going to stop here. Uh, hopefully you won't have any major situation or everything will run smoothly for you. Um, and um, thank you once again. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.